Land of Missing, and this is Grant Miller. Hey, hey! <laughs> we are here for another Marketing Monday, the first one to kick off 2021. I hope you guys are as excited as we are today. I'm always It's always a great time with Grant in the studio. I'm pumped up because today's a special day. Today's it's been, special... well, tell them about it. It's today, so... we're popping bottles, not only because it is a new year and bye-bye 2020, but because it is Miss Inc.'s 13th anniversary. So we have 13 years under our belt in this social media marketing business. We started January 1st, 2008. And here we are today, all these years later, still rocking and rolling and still with our great friends that we met in the very beginning who supported us. So thank you for that, by the way. Well, so how do you get into this? First of all, people out in TV world, I'm do my watch party. just FYI, I remember <laughs> when she was a cheerleader at oh, wow. Sunnyland oh, Park. Now we're going. We're, now we're going back to the so, 90s. <laughs> I, I, what year? That was in eighty in the eighties. No, my first actually, my first season was 90s. the year of Hurricane Andrew, so right. ninety two. Right. That was my first year there at the park. This, her her family was park rats at Sunnyland Park. We were. We were. You, you were a park rat. <laughs> we, were. we were. So we were. so how did you get into marketing? How did I get into marketing? Yes. So. Um, I actually, it's kind of like a funny story. So uh, I went to Palmetto for high school when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in college. Um, I actually first started in architecture school and then decided that I didn't want to, because I wanted to do interior design, right? But then I decided I didn't want to do interior design. So now I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Well, I've always really loved to write and be creative. And so I thought, why not public relations? I didn't even really knew what it, know what it was, but that's what I ended up studying. Um, Where? Um, I did two years at FIU and then I transferred to Florida State, actually double majored in public relations and that's what everybody writing. says. I got three I got three degrees no, at FSU. Degree, Partying is one. Well, I was big dad was there a big daddy. I graduated there there? cum laude, so I graduate I worked very hard. <laughs> Wait, was there a big daddy's there the the three level bar? In Tallahassee? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. We had all you, kinds of other things. Okay. There. So so you but graduated that's what I did. and then I just and then I went I went to work I started in actually while I was in when I was in college I did an internship at Rolling Stone magazine which was pretty freaking cool I lived in no New York way. for a summer where at, yeah in, in, New in, in New York and I, I interned for Rolling Stone magazine and us weekly and men's journal with Warner media and their PR department so I did that for a wait, little wait, while. were you in their office yeah I worked there in New York yeah that is cool <laughs> okay but not a lot okay. of people know that <laughs> what what year was that do you remember oh, that was 2000 two because it was right after 9 11. okay so 2002 what were the big story you were there for a summer i was there for a summer what was the big stories there do you remember I'm like trying to read was there something like there was i don't remember there being oh god this was like the age of like benifer you know like ben and jennifer so right. like when we were writing stuff for us weekly it was about that um with rolling stone i'm trying to think who was on the cover of a magazine and they were going to be i think on the letterman show and so they had us interns to create like make these huge copies of like the cover of the magazine and go down to the people waiting in line at the studio to get into the show and hand them to them so they could promote that they were on the this band that was going to be on the show was also on the cover of the magazine and we got kicked out in like five seconds <laughs> now you so you're a miami and living in new york yeah who do you live with in new york myself i know i got this your dad allowed that and your mom yeah I had this. I can see your brother please. live in New York. Oh, no why? problem. Why? Why my brother and not me? <laughs> I don't like this stereotype. Um, no, I just I that's what I did. And then actually, I I after I graduated college, the first job that I landed was with um, American Kennel Club in New York. So I moved American back there again. What? American Kennel Club. These are things I didn't know. This Little known facts. This is what Marketing Monday has turned into. <laughs> Wait. So you did you work there for the kennel? Yeah, we worked for, I worked for in the PR department so what did, at American well, Kennel Exactly Club. what, that was the uh, big dog shows. That they did all the big dog shows, yeah. And they do all of the the, the breed standards and all of that uh, stuff. I, okay, I know we're supposed to be talking about you. And, <laughs> okay, I still don't understand how one man or woman, uh -huh. person, gets to pick the winner. How did they get to do it? I didn't stay long enough to figure that out because I quickly decided <laughs> that New York blizzards were not for me. <laughs> Like that, dog that, days were out that winter was not for me i would come home be on the boat in the keys and i'm like why am i walking in snow in new york like this doesn't make even though i love the city this doesn't make sense so i came back home <laughs> all right so let's get let's get to you let's all talk right. about let's talk about well to you guys out there because we're going to talk about 2021 social media trends 
right? So things that you guys need to be aware of. So one thing we're going to chat about this actually a little bit more next week is video. So we want to look at live unedited video. So just like we're, we're doing here, right? Like people, they like to connect with who people really are. So I think the polished videos are out. <laughs> so uh, Tommy and I did a, sh a video live, uh -huh. noisy. The mics didn't work perfect at lots of locks last week. Uh, people walking behind us, interrupted. We were eating. Right. And people loved it. They love it. Why? Because they get to feel like they're there, right? They get to feel like, <laughs> I love this hat, by the way. They get to feel like they are a part of the experience. And that's where you really draw people in is telling that story and getting them to feel like they're a part of where you're at. When it's super polished and edited, that doesn't always come off the same way. The only advantage of when you edit it, you shorten the thing down. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can make it say exactly what you want it to okay. say. And as as we do, we do a lot of uh, show videos. Yes. Not a lot of shows. The ones where you go to like, right. the, okay. And yeah. anytime I goof up, uh -huh. Our editor, Aaron, puts it in. It's the best part. And it drives me crazy. But it's the best part. It's like there's some words I just can't pronounce. And he'll run it over and over and <laughs> just over. Just like on a loop. <laughs> it's like, so point of it we is. We should do that here. I trip up on my words a lot. People like that. They love it. Yeah. Because why? Because it makes them feel like, oh, I'm not the only one. Like, you know, somebody else out there is like me. We don't have to all be picture perfect all the time. I'm a big fan of that. Like bloopers. Yeah. So I'm just going on what you say. Our videos we do mm -hmm. it's really about funny things it's, i don't know if you saw one i did one on hot works oh no i missed that one. oh i'm drenched sweaty how did and, i not see this one and <laughs> point of it, it it made it normal oh uh, exactly so, so i totally agree with you and how do we how do they do more live and then do they do a facebook how to how would they do yeah, it? it just depends on what um platform you want to use um, if you find that you have a lot of people on Instagram, then go on Instagram. And actually, there's tools like the ones that we're using for this show, which we can get into later. But there's tools that you can use that will do one live stream to all your platforms. And so you have an opportunity to be live in several places at once and monitor comments and respond and all that fun stuff. But if you don't want to get that fancy, you don't have to. You can just plan to go live and you can tell people you can either do it spontaneously or you can tell people, Hey, we're going to go live on this day at this time on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you're well, going. Well, that's the tough part. You know, you go live like we are, uh -huh. mistakes happen. You yes. go, uh, if you don't go live, you can edit it, but live people like to see that you're naturally you misspell words. You, you wear yeah. your hair wrong, uh, exactly. you know, all that stuff. And it, it makes it more human. <laughs> What's happening? Exactly. Yeah. What's going on? You wear well, your hair. Well, you know, off. women want yeah, a certain like things way. Will be, yeah. No, I mean, you'll notice sometimes I mess with my hair because I look in the monitor and I'm like, oh my God. But yeah, so it totally, it totally is just real, right? Like just like almost, I think it's, it's even more popular now because it's as close as you can get to being in person and having a live conversation with somebody as, as you can get these days. I right? wore this hat on New Year's Eve and I went to our betters. How much more real can that be? That, Eating yeah. at our betters. On eight o'clock New Year's Eve, with that hat, with this hat, that's the way and you, you. What's strange? I was not the only person in the restaurant. Yeah, I bet. And it's interesting. Um, but this, I want to talk about one of your is issues you brought up. Okay. The restaurants that are still Miami, mm -hmm. like Shorty, Shriver's, yes. are betters. Uh, some restaurants that have that old touch, right? They're human. Mm -hmm. And I, that's why I think a lot of them are successful that way. Yeah, people, they crave that, right? Like, I live near Keg South. You know, people want to go oh, where you right. feel like... You still go to the Keg? You've been going there since you were 17. Oh, my God, longer than I should probably talk about, but yes. But, okay, <laughs> let's use the Keg or the Hole in the Wall. Right, Hole in the Wall. E mm -hmm. Let's use the Hole in the Wall. Even it's a newer it's new, establishment. It's newer, but it doesn't matter. It's the same feel. Same feel. Same feel, It's yeah. like, uh, like the Keg. Hey, Miller, and you got to walk over and get your burger. Like, other yeah, restaurants, yeah. they deliver it. Right. And that's why you're talking about making a human. Yeah, it feels casual. It doesn't feel stuffy. You feel like, you know, you're just there just to kind of like hang out, relax. You don't have to be prim and proper, right? You're just there. Come as you are, in other words. And that's how, and it's interesting. The keg, the hole in the wall, these restaurants, are betters, Shriver's, uh, mm -hmm. Shorty's. Duffy's. Oh, yeah. We have, let's use Duffy's on Red Road. Yeah, Is we got that, Walter's down there, south, which okay, I worked out for a million years. Okay, let's use that. <laughs> There's people that are millionaires. Right. 
and regular yeah. people. And that's why people love that because it's such a cross. Actually, you want to hear a funny thing? The reason I got that internship at Rolling Stone magazine was because of a customer at Walter's coffee shop when I was working there. You worked at Walters for from when I was like fifteen until in my early twenties. Wow! You, yeah, you heard about the car, Rim. I saw. Yeah. yeah. Actually, if you go there, there's a menu item named after me, the Misty Rubin. That's you. That's me. <laughs> wow! So that you, is me. You and I have something to come. You have a, I have a hot dog named after me, and you got a what? A uh, Reuben, which I no longer eat meat, but it's a turkey Reuben that I used. So that's what I, that was like that's, my thing, eat, and then I stopped eating meat. So, but the sandwich is still named. You, when did you stop eating meat? Like five years ago. Is your sp spouse? Does, no, he eats meat. He just he, does he makes enough meat. up for you guys, and has it changed your being a vegetarian? A vegetarian? Ah, uh, pescatarian. So I eat fish. Just like a Unitarian. Yeah. What's a pescatarian? Pescatarian, you only eat fish. So you eat, you know, like your cheeses and your vegetables and all that. But I don't eat like chicken, pork, or beef. And what has it done to your body? I don't know. I mean, I I, I feel good. I just, oh. I did it. I did it because like to me, I don't know. It's an animal thing. Which is, why do you eat fish? I have my reasons. We won't get into Whatever that. it is. But anyways, more of a Mediterranean diet, if you will. Healthier, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, you'll live longer, I guess. It makes me, I feel better. How about that? that? That's all that matters. Okay, let's talk about branding. Yeah, let's talk about branding. So we've talked about this a lot in the last few weeks, but there's a few things people are really going to be looking for, especially more this year, um, that human approach. So we're looking for telling stories, kind of like our, we're, we're telling stories right now, but those are the things that you're probably going to remember the most from this segment today are these stories that we're talking about. Um, so we're talking about, you're going to talk, you want to talk about stories. You want to talk about having that emotional appeal, um, making people feel like they are a part of your, a part of your brand and feel, have that emotional buy-in and then diversity, showing diversity, right? So those, those are a few really big things this year when you're looking at your branding to be looking at these elements that people are craving. You know, branding's interesting because every restaurant, we're talking about restaurant, Pig Floyd. Yes. You ever eaten there yet? I am not because I don't eat meat. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, but guys. their logo, I'm not going to tell you what the, the owner, one of the owners, every morning uh -huh. he posts a photograph. Okay. And it's the middle finger. Really? Every morning he sends on the, it on the company page on the Facebook of famous actors uh -huh. who have shot birds. That's genius, actually. It, every, something different, yeah. yeah. Every actor, and then he had one his finger was on fire. But every famous <laughs> actor, he has him shooting a bird, uh -huh. and it's and it's a brand. It's like if you don't like it, don't come. Right. But I think every restaurant has their own brand. Right. They, some of them don't know as as much. But I think mm -hmm. they have to build a brand, right? Yeah, you have to let people know why they are coming to you in the first place, and be memorable about it. You know, like there's there's restaurants that, that you go to and then you sort of forget about because there was nothing there was memorable a, about it. There was nothing. So pick me, a, tell me a business that you like their brand, that a I local like, owner, local owner that I like their brand. Man, that's hard. That's going to get me in trouble with my. Clients. Doesn't have to be a restaurant. It can be anything. <laughs> let me see who does a really good job with. Brandy. Oh, listen here. Um, I got one. I, will, oh, I got okay. one. I got one. Okay. Panter and Panter law yes. firm. Okay. okay, that's definitely okay. So here's a law firm who's been right. around forever. Their their brand to me, first of all, it's green. Green. Yeah, Sometimes not deviated from that. They they stay on green. Yes. And they talk about family. Family first. Family first. Yes. And that's a big thing. And uh, if when you see them on their shows, not shows on their videos, right. They're human. They're, yeah. And I'm glad you bring that up because it's exactly what our goal has been with their marketing and with their branding this whole time. So if you go to their Instagram feed, we want it to feel like their brand. So we manage that. We want it to feel like it has their logos. We want it to feel like family first. We want those videos to come across. Yes, we have our polished commercials. that we Hi, TV. I'm Morgan, 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 Morgan. Yeah, we're not and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan. <laughs> we're, we're I mean, just, but you're not but you can't be somebody else you got to be who you are and what's true to your brand and so that's what um is true to their brand so everything you just said is exactly on point with their goals so shout out to mitch panther and the guys and the girls over there you're doing an awesome job with that Mitch, brett uh the other david part. josh we got al as an attorney over there and then they have all these an awesome supporting cast i can name all these you know you got sarah anna all these people <laughs> well it's important with a brand, you know, I, I I wasn't picking on Morgan, 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 and Morgan, but now there's another Morgan not related to them. All right, I'm Morgan, 
And then, you know, it's like they're all spinning yeah. off of the question is, do you feel comfortable when you watch right. them on their shows, on their videos, you <laughs> feel comfortable. So their brand is family, the color community, green, what community, community. right? Yeah. Um, they're very involved in the community. Actually, we just launched a thing that we're going to do it. We're doing with pause for you. So that's a new effort for us. We're partnering with them to with some dogs that they have up for adoption. So that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so community, family, green, like just and and really sticking true to that, right? And that's tough because you know you the times change and you're worried about branding. Mm -hmm. You've got to stick whatever your brand is and stick at it. Right. Okay. So in a, a hu the human touch and the human touch. Yeah. People that don't want to feel like they're being talked at anymore. Um, it's not like, um, you know, there's that famous slogan. Here's one like obey your thirst, drink Sprite. Okay. Well, great. Like, but, but what, what is Sprite doing for me? So that's, you know, like that's more of the mentality I think these days, especially at the local level, you know, people want to see that you're involved and, and that you're out there. Um, and that you're, you're a part of the, you're a part of the community. Right? right. I think that's that has changed completely. If you go to car dealers, let's use them. Mm -hmm. uh, some car dealers are entrenched in their community. Ocean, right. I mean, uh, Williamson Cadillac yes. and Buick, they're entrenched, mm -hmm. the Williamson family. And you can go all the way up, go up to. Um, Shout different. out to Bill Ussery. By Bill Ussery, yeah. The, the Ussery is the, <laughs> their family has been huge entrenched the brockway family yes it's the brockway family they're entrenched and they're just like the Williams entrenched and, and you know when you go to like auto nation the south end you go they're not entrenched because they're not locally owned right so we have to keep that in mind we have uh the brickle motors mm -hmm. who ha had a big event at their uh location they gave 1500 toys away i have santa was there oh wow. grant santa claus and i was there so but talk about entrenched branding and that's a secret in business. Okay. Yeah. Let's move to the next thing. Yeah. The message. Definitely. Um, oh, messenger. So this is another thing that we're seeing emerging as a trend. So more people are going to be using messenger. So, you know, when someone says to you direct message me or send me a message, or I get WhatsApp, all confused. I, whatever, just text it. Uh, and they go, oh, yeah. no DM. Go, DM, DM me. All right. So that DM message, that private message, the WhatsApps, the whatever, the, whatever you want, you're at, you're doing your, your one-on-one -on -one messaging or even in a group. The thing to be aware of with that is that that's only growing in popularity as people want to protect their privacy when they are tagging or sharing people and stuff. So what that brands need to be, what brands need to be aware of with that is basically one thing. It doesn't mean if you're seeing less shares um, or less comments that you're you're not getting the traction, but it could mean that people are sharing them on Messenger and they're because that is a private platform or a private feature, there is no way to pull those analytics to say, oh, okay, someone shared your post or your link or your sale or your coupon or whatever with somebody through this direct message. There's no way to track that because it's that's the whole appeal of it is that it's private. <laughs> And so we call that dark social because that's where uh, something is taking place in a private space. You, ooh, you're not going to be able to just knock myself in the chin with the microphone. Talk about live, <laughs> live bloopers. You're human. I'm human, live bloopers. So um, anyways, but, the, but that's what we're talking about. So if you may not see those. You may not say, oh, okay, I'm not getting the shares. I'm not getting this. It doesn't mean that it's not happening. It just might be happening in that dark well, social fun, space. It's funny you say that because I have people here. First of all, we don't measure by how many views because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how many views it's who's viewing it right that's all in my one mm -hmm. of the best best uh, welfare management people phil lyons is watching right now hey, phil. so point of it is it's not how many it's who's watching right and then top it all so when this show's done mm -hmm. oh by the way tommy you got to post my one from last week that <laughs> all the shows that i do go on to my linkedin Right. Who doesn't show up on views. Right. So, and then we show it on YouTube. And, and those we, are all unique views, right? So it's unique correct. to that platform. So YouTube is only going to be your YouTube views, Facebook that's only your correct. Facebook, LinkedIn only your LinkedIn. Um, but yeah, so, it's the same. So, so I tell people, <clears throat> stop worrying about the count. Mm -hmm. I said, if you had 100 people call you and doesn't buy anything, is it success? No, I said, but if you had two people call you and buy something, what's more successful? Two people. So right. stop worrying about the amount and who the viewers are, who's participating. Right. So, and it gets very confusing, especially in your end, because you do all the analytics and, and you go, well, I had X, Y, Z. 
that doesn't mean it's good or bad. Right. You just have the analytics, correct? You have the analytics. And it's sometimes it's harder to track exactly what that success means when you're looking at the analytics. Because if you are looking for a sale, your social might be more of a social proof where if someone is saying, oh, okay, I'm looking for a personal injury law attorney, right? And someone says, and someone says to them, oh, go check out Panther, Panther, and San Pedro. Or they, oh, you know, I might know that name. I think I've seen it around town. Um, that sounds familiar to me. Let me go look them up. And so they're looking at reviews. They're looking at their social media. They're looking at some of these other things. So that may they may not have seen a specific post, for instance, on LinkedIn that we put out that led them to call and make that consultation appointment with one of the attorneys. But they may have used that to qualify the company. Correct. Right. I mean, so that makes it more difficult to say. You know, if you have a lead page where you can track conversions and you know all that, that's a different ball game. But when we're talking strictly social, it's it's a little bit different. It's it's very confusing it's for confusing. any business. You know, we have these people. I want to analytics. I go. Question is, who's watching? Right. You know, and, right. and like our shows that we have here, it's not how many, it's who's watching, who's paying attention, right? And is it is it good for everybody? Yeah, and I think that consistency and people just seeing you continue to show up. And they may not necessarily comment and they may not share and they may not like, but they're watching and they're seeing, right? So and that goes back to branding and that goes back to branding. So now people are starting, for example, with this show. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have a show on marketing, right? And some people are now starting to see that. That doesn't mean they're necessarily commenting on every single one of these, yeah, could, right. pro these broadcasts that we do, but they are aware of them. And they know like, this is something that, that we're doing. And, and that's good branding for you. Exactly. They go, oh, you have a show, you talk about this, you talk about that. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the word branding. TikTok. Yes. TikTok. So are, you, TikTok are, are we going to dance? I don't know any of the current TikTok oh, okay. dances. I tried one once and I failed miserably. Uh, <laughs> it was like total disaster. Um, but so TikTok, the thing to be aware of on that network is it's still obviously really popular. Mostly people in their teens and 20 somethings. There are 30 somethings and 40 somethings and 50 somethings also that are on this platform but it's mostly popular with teens and 20s. What this means is that um, you watch out for influencers on there. So if you have a product or a service for this specific market for kids, for kids <laughs> in their teens or in their 20s for young adults, check out TikTok, look into their influencers, don't dismiss it, right? Because that can really help you just propel cells. If it's the right person and the right fit and they do the right job on their TikTok video, you can really see things skyrocket there for you. I, I, I sometimes I watch these, sh I call them shows. Uh -huh. It's like, wow, it's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, you can get totally sucked into that. I like the one particularly with like the dogs with the human voices and doing funny things. Like that's, those are the things that I crack up over. <laughs> TikTok is, is skyrocketing, right? It is skyrocketing still. Yeah, it's it's mega, mega popular. Okay, e-commerce, virtual offerings, things like that, online yeah, so, workouts, demos. Uh, you yeah, know, I, people are still looking for, so this is kind of tricky, right? Because people want that one-on-one -on -one connection. So, but they still, but we still live in sort of this virtual space that's really, let's be honest, probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon with that having to do most of these things online or having people mostly comfortable being, doing things in a virtual space. So I think, you know, if there's a way to get creative and to think about that um, and still make it personal, then that's something to continue to to think about. Right? You know, there, there's so many things that you watch. I, I get addicted. I'm not that I'm a, a foodie or whatever they call. Uh -huh. You know, I watch sometimes on Facebook or I, I'm on my email. They get me making cooking on the it's pretty interesting, the demonstrations. Oh, yeah. You can get totally sucked into all of those things. So that's another thing. We're talking about local businesses. Maybe that's – and we're talking about live video. You can totally combine the two. Do a live cooking demonstration and show people what it is that goes behind making something. Most people are not going to go make it. They're going to come to you to have well, it. Correct. <laughs> I, I, right. Not many people are going to cook it themselves, but they go, oh, maybe I'll order that. That's yeah, correct. they can say, oh, okay, they're using fresh ingredients. They come from local farmers. This is not like, you know, some of these chain restaurants, it tastes like everything came out of the freezer. So if that's not what's happening at your restaurant, it's a perfect way to show that. Like, why do you use that specific cheese? Where do you get your bread from? Stuff like that, I think, is a perfect way to combine those two, the video and the I have to show. interrupt you. Robbie Roca is watching. He's the most, maybe the top 
baseball tournament guy in Southeast yeah, United. Yeah. He puts on baseball tournaments all over. So, hey, Robbie Roca. I, you're in, you, you were in Robbie. Milwaukee last. What were you doing in Milwaukee? But happy new year, Robbie. Milwaukee. That yeah. Sounds cold. Yeah. No baseball. <laughs> he wasn't doing a baseball tournament. Okay. Okay. Uh -oh. Uh, yeah, we're not hashtags. Okay. I, I'm so confused on that. Okay, so hashtags, guys, I have to tell you, are becoming a little bit less relevant. Um, Instagram announced recently that they are going to actually give more, it's already started, they're giving more relevance to keyword terms. So if you are using Instagram, you don't need to put 52 different hashtags. Those are not working as well anymore. Um, I will tell you how they are working. They're not irrelevant, but use your keyword terms. So talk about um, your service, the th same keywords that you would talk about on a website and not talk about, not keyword stuffing, by the way, where your caption is just a bunch of keywords, but um, starting to implement that more, making sure those keywords are in your bio. Those are things to be looking out for versus just the hashtag. Now, if your hashtag happens to be a brand, if your hashtag happens to fall on a national holiday that you want to tie into, um, I'm going to use hashtags, right? Like, like if, where, where did that come? Just I, I don't know. There, I mean, literally, I, we follow these calendars. There's a day, every single day. There's actually multiple. But today holidays. is. I'm going to look up what today is. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm going to look up what today is. Anniversary. Okay. It is our anniversary. Well, like we use a hashtag. That's community. We use that. Yes. That's yeah, so hashtag. that's a branded and that's a branded hashtag, right? But are people going to use that to find you? No, but no. are they going to use it to recognize your brand? Ah. Yes. It is national spaghetti. No way. January 4th. Oh, it's it's actually four things. National Trivia Day, National Missouri Day, National Thank God It's Monday Day, and then also National Spaghetti Day. Okay. This is ridiculous. It is actually National Spaghetti Day, National Trivia Day, and a few other things. But I think I need to go play the lotto. I hear that that... uh. Mega millions or whatever is, is like ridiculous right now. So maybe I need to go to play 400, that. 400 million. How did I just pull National Spaghetti Day on the actual National Spaghetti Day? All right. So we got good to know. Thank you. Okay. For there's in. a new program, new thing called the Clubhouse. Yes. What and this is, is it? the last thing? Clubhouse, guys. So it is brand new. Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you haven't. You can only get in by an invite. Um, Every user gets one invite. So, like, I have one invitation. If you want it, I'll send it to you, by the way. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you can have my invite. So, um, but basically, it's it's really cool. There's a couple ways I can think of to describe it. And Clubhouse is basically rooms. Like, you know how we used to have online chat rooms? Right. Like, and when AOL and everything was coming out and we used to go in these online chat rooms, it's kind of like that, but it happens all over speaking. So, another way to think of it is like live podcasting with groups of people at a time taking turns speaking. So let's say someone has a room about um, about marketing, about social media marketing, right? You can join, you can request to speak and the the presenter can have as many speakers as they want. And you and then it's just like a group discussion with people that you don't even know necessarily about a, around a specific topic. It's really freaking cool. All right, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna about wrap it up, but this I gotta talk about this one more time. So <laughs> we're popping bottles. Popping bottles. Why? Tell us why again. <laughs> why? It's thirteen years. Thirteen years. Yes, we started officially January first, two thousand eight. So we made it to our thirteenth anniversary. So that means we're entering our fourteenth year. Super crazy. There was a time I didn't know if I'd make it to five. Okay. So but here we are. In the thirteen years. Yeah. Tell us. I'm trying to get the pen <laughs> right. See this, yeah. When did it start taking off? It is one, and this is thirteen. When did it start taking off? Probably, honestly, it's it probably six. started taking off around like year five or six. Okay, so in because the middle. People six in the beginning, they didn't know what social media was, and and literally from the beginning, I was talking about social media marketing because I had left my job to start this company, and I had so I had a lot of time on my hands in the beginning. And so I started to notice Facebook pages. Um, Twitter was brand new. No one knew what that was at the time. And I was like, man, these are these would be good ways to, to market your business. And actually, before Miss Inc. had a website, we had a MySpace account because I was like, oh, I might MySpace. That wow. was that was our first web presence was on MySpace. So I tell everybody that because that was 
our first introduction into the okay. internet, but also into social media marketing. So it took you three to four years just to understand everything. Just to get people to start to understand that this wasn't a trend and that this was something that was meaningful to their business. And, you know, I'll be honest, I worked part time jobs while I was getting the business going. It wasn't like from day one. We had all these clients. It was it took it took an effort. It's, it's, a, it, it's very exciting. Now, every day you think you know enough about it. Every day, something new is coming out. Correct? Oh my gosh. You have to Literally, stay on top of it. Every single day, I subscribe to all kinds of newsletters. I'm always taking webinars. Like, we're just always watching and then sort of like fielding through what is happening for what's most important to our clients, which are small business, service based, um, local clients for the most part. We have one client on the West Coast, but we're all here in South Florida. The biggest so. issue people think about, you know, do you have to do everything? I'm not going you're not going to have to answer this now, okay. but that's it. Cause you could talk about that next. Do you have to do all these social medias? Should you no. do all these social medias? No. Can you afford all these social medias? Maybe it depends. I mean, it depends on the size of your business. You know, I mean, that's something, look, if it's something that you want to talk about it, shoot me an email, misty at missing.com. Um, and we can, we can talk about that specifically for you. Um, whether it's just like we have a, a quick introductory session or you want to do more of a consulting thing, we can do that too. Um, or we can set up the whole thing for you. But if you're just a local business and you're trying to figure out where do I go? What do I do? I feel like I'm late to the game. You're not. It's totally cool. Don't worry about it. We okay. can help you. Here's how I think it. We're all late to the game. You're always listen in social media. You're always late to the game. I am late to the game every single day. And this is what I do for a living because there's just it moves so fast. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, we we do we try to catch up on everything. You know, we do Facebook Live, we do yes. in person interviews, we do yeah, videos. you guys are killing it. We're doing videos, we're doing trying to do everything. Then we have our newsletters, then we yeah. have our print, and it's just every day something new's happening and it's tougher and tougher. Yeah, so it is it's tough. almost time. You want to wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. So I want to thank you guys for being here for another Marketing Monday. Again, the first one of the year. I wish you nothing but health, prosperity, and blessings. Again, I'm Misty Buck with Missing. This is Grant Miller. And you, everybody you have a happy new year. And have a happy new year. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week. You got it. Did she send you a link?